when you have entered into the timeless sanctuary of death, even your heartbeat feels sacred. When you have witnessed your beloved exhale for the final time, the air tastes sweeter and cleaner. Your once fretted upon worries and gripes with humanity dissolve, leaving you wide open in the vastness of love. When you honor your own selfish needs, speaking the words that you need to say and touching your beloved's body, trying to soak up the last remnants of their flesh, you move differently. For the realization of your desire to connect exceeds any to retreat. When you no longer hold a selfish want for yourself other than to simply bear witness and presence for your beloved's departure, your selfish ways release their hold and that which once was yours or mine collide uniting particles in the great unified field of consciousness. When you've participated in the birth and death of life, you notice the small things. You listen acutely to the unseen world of spirit. Your complaints disappear, not your loved ones. You are transported beyond fear into the holding ground of unconditional love. When you've met the unknown face to face, you don't fear it as much. You trust the great mystery. When you have no more words to say, and for a brief moment, it feels as though all your tears have dried up, you stop squirming or feeling like you are helplessly untethered, fighting to find a cord of relief. Your muscles relax, as does your jaw, pelvis, and mind. When the surrender comes organically and naturally, not forced or planned, you feel the presence of the holy. All that flailing about distracts us, convincing us to believe we are alone, destitute, unwanted, or even unloved. When in truth, we need a new creation story that doesn't abide by sin or shame. When we look into the eyes of what lies beyond fear, we meet the face of grace. Our Divine Mother, Father, God, Goddess, we are home, we have returned. She has been there all along. It was we that ventured on a journey far. When you can no longer feel or believe in that lie, that you are abandoned, betrayed, or forgotten, your lips automatically curl upwards, as do your arms and hands. The energy of life is lighter because you have released the hold of density. It's heavy to constantly repeat old philosophies and theologies that condemn and separate. It's light to be free of these conditionings. It's also organic when you are in the flowing currents of birth and death. The river returns to the ocean. What was the last thing you have done with your whole heart? Another way to ask this is, when did birth rip you apart only to show you the power that resides within you? When did death annihilate all of your plans, wishes, prayers, and demands so you were able to touch the sacred that you and all of life are intrinsically a part of? When you no longer push, resist, or fight, when you no longer separate yourself from the force that is moving moving through life, when you place your heartbeat back into the chest of the great beloved mystery and release your breath to the winds of change, you are the miracle, as is everyone and everything else. The slightest breeze, bird song, drop of rain, glimmer of sunlight, and cloud gently floating, 
signifies how blessed we are to be alive. The me humbly releases its mold and reforms itself to the earth and clay comprised of earth, water, air, and fire. We are no longer just passing through a dangerous, forgotten, or forbidden world. We are composed of the Holy Land. Living, even if just for this moment, the most precious and miraculous unfolding of this godly existence. The Holy Trinity, mother, father, child, together upholding the sanctity of this union, making life possible as we know it.